So hi. Um, now we're going to apply the Shockley Reed Harl expression for a couple of special cases. So we'll we'll look at um, low level, high level injection and injection um, uh, processes in a depletion region. So these are rather um, realistic uh, concepts that will encounter everyday devices. So here we go. Uh, here's the expression. Uh, we had uh, derived uh, Shockley Reed Hall expression, and we're going to consider uh, something called uh, low level injection. First of all, we'll start out with a P type semiconductor. What does that look like? Well, you have lots of holes and you have uh, virtually no electrons. Remember, if you have lots of holes, Ni squared equals N times P. So if uh, the number of holes is large, larger than Ni squared, that means P is going to be small. So basically, there's no electrons up there. Okay? It's basically empty. Just to get you some ideas again what those mean, to get some numbers in your head. So typical doping could be 10 to the 18, okay? For N comma P. Ni is typically 10 to the 10 in silicon. So, if the majority carrier is doped, say 10 to the 18, with some number of acceptors, that means N in this case is 10 to the 20 divided by 10 to the 18, 100. So there's a gazillion and one uh, uh, holes and 100 electrons. So that imbalance is just dramatic, okay? So lots of uh, holes in the valence band, virtually none in the uh, uh, up there. Okay, so P-type doping, meaning P0 is larger than N0. And we're going to do low-level injection. What does that mean? Well, we'll inject some electrons by some process, some minority carrier, okay? Something larger than 100, something larger than Ni, Ni but smaller than the original doping. So the delta N we're going to inject up there through some excitation is... Um, Significant, but not huge, okay? So, we're going to inject electrons up there, and they're going to recombine, and we're asking ourselves, what's the rate of recombination? Okay? So, here we go. Now, we're going to plug some numbers into this expression. All right. What does it mean? First of all, we express both N and P as N0 plus some delta N and N0 plus, uh, P0 as plus some delta N, okay? Because we have um, taken, we as we created more electrons, we also have created more holes down here, okay? So that's the point. So here there were depiction no holes, and these are, new, so to speak, new holes that we created and delta N must be equal to delta P because we didn't change total charge of the system, okay? So we're going we're gonna to set N equals N0 plus delta N and P must be P0 plus delta N, okay? All right, so you just plug that in and when you have N0 times N0, P0, and you see minus Ni square, you know that's going to cancel, law of mass action, and then you're stuck with an expression like this. You have something N0, P0 times delta N, and delta N squared. Now we said that up here, N0 is much smaller than P0. Okay, so we can compare it to P, we can delete this guy, and we're going to neglect this guy, okay? Cancel this, 
cancel this down here, and we have an expression that looks like this. We have delta n p0 p0 or delta n over tau. Okay? We're also neglecting this term here over this, this term here, right? Yep, there we go. Good, looks right. Good. Not going back, going forward. So we have an, a recombination that is basically proportional to the number of extra carriers we introduced, delta n, divided by their lifetime or their recombination rate. We talked about tau n being the minority carrier li uh, a lifetime. Okay? So we have a few minority carriers being injected and they decay with their respective minority carrier lifetime. All right, nothing fancy. Seems rather natural, comes out of this on top pretty horrendous looking expression. All right, now let's take another case, the case of high level injection. Starting out again from P-dope and what we're doing now is we're injecting the system very hard. So very high injection means that the number of carriers we are injecting is now comparable or larger than the original doping. Okay, so we're flooding the system with additional carriers away from, uh, far away from equilibrium, really far away. So we create, if I said, well, we have p-doped, we have some number of dopants here, we create a larger number of holes and electrons up here. And there's going to be lots of recombination, and we're asking ourselves, what is the recombination rate? Okay, so let's plug, plug these expressions in again, right? N0 is, uh, N is N0 plus delta N, etc. We lose again this term with this term over this term, right? And we have the same uh, numerator and the same denominator as in the previous slide. But now we're going to have different, um, we're going to have different approximations. We're stating that delta n is much, much larger than p0 and n0. All right, so n0 for sure we can forget. N1 is close to the equi uh, equilibrium value. We forget about this term and this term. And now delta N here is the largest one, so we can forget about these terms and this. And we get delta N squared over the sum of the um, carrier lifetimes. So at high level injection, it's not just the electron um, uh, time that is needed to drive the system back to equilibrium, but also the majority carrier lifetime. So, basically, the, the system will react much stronger to a much stronger excitation, and it involves minority and majority carriers in this relaxation process. All right, so compare those numbers. In the left here, you have lots of holes, few electrons, independent of holes, decay with minority carrier lifetime if you have low-level injection. If you have high-level injection, you need more processes to reduce the system back to equilibrium in a stronger way. All right. Now let's look at a third case. And that is, again, in anticipation of a real device, like a PN junction. And we're looking at a depletion region. In a depletion region, you have no free carriers. By some process that we'll look into the details more later, you have no free carriers or virtually none, meaning N and P are much, much smaller than NI. Than NI. Okay? So 
The system would be normally we have electrons or we have holes, but really there is none. But there's lots of traps available, right here, roughly mid-gap. That means N1 is also larger than N, and P1 is also larger than P. Okay? So now we can begin to um, chuck some numbers. So P time, Pn, we said, is 0. And we have um, N plus N1 and P plus P2, uh, P1. We chuck the P's over there, and we get minus Ni square tau N, uh, tau N1, tau, tau Pn1, tau, tau NP1. So what we see here is a negative uh, recombination, and I mentioned this in the previous section. Negative recombination means generation. So what happens in the system here is that the system tries to drive itself back to equilibrium. If there aren't any electrons and holes, and there should be some, the system will uh, use traps to drive or to create electrons and holes in this form such that you have an equilibrium established. Once you establish equilibrium, then NP equals NI squared, which means this term is zero. That means R and G, the net R and G, go to zero. So this trap-assisted recombination, trap-assisted generation, re-establish equilibrium once you drove the system out of equilibrium. Okay. Good. So these are some examples of that we need for real devices and that those uh, numbers show up again and these expressions show up again. Now we're ready to um, look at some very different uh, recombination generation uh, mechanisms called direct and Auger uh, recombination and that will be in the next section. So I'll see you then.